Concentrations are a way of measuring the strength of a solution, and it's usually given in as an amount per unit volume. So this can be something like the mass in a certain volume of solution or the number of moles in a certain volume of solution. Uh, so you could write something like grams per milliliter or grams per liter or moles per liter or any, anything like that. Typically what we use is something called molarity, which is given in units of capital M and is expressed in units of moles per liter. So if you have something that is one molar, it has one mole of contents, one mole of solute uh, in one liter of solution. Or it has 0.5 moles in 0.5 liters of solution. Either way, it works out to the same ratio, where if you do the division, you end up again with one mole for every one liter. And this kind of unit lets us convert between concentration and moles and volume. So if we have something like a three molar solution of sodium chloride, and we know that we've got one liter of sodium chloride solution, we know that we have three moles of sodium chloride. So we'll do a couple of examples now. So let's say we have three moles of some sugar dissolved in 15 liters of water. We want to know what is the molarity, what is the concentration of that solution. Well, we know molarity has units of moles per liter, so what we do is we set up a ratio. We have 3.0 moles of sugar divided by 15.0 liters, and we do that division, we end up with a value of 0 0.20 molar C6H12O6. Our second example is in two parts. We have 0 0.750 moles of FeCl3 dissolved in one liter of water. And we want to know what is the molarity of the iron 3 chloride. What we do is exactly the same as the last example. We take the number of moles and we divide it by the number of liters. So we have 0 0.750 moles of FeCl3 and we divide that by 1.00 liters of water and we end up with a value of 0 0.750 molar FeCl3. So the molarity of iron 3 chloride is, is pretty easy to calculate. Something a little bit different is the molarity of chloride ions in that solution. It's important to remember that iron chloride, the iron 3 chloride, is ionic and if it's all dissolved, ionic things dissociate in water, it's a strong electrolyte. So what's really happening in solution is FeCl3 is splitting up into Fe3 plus ions and three chloride ions. So for every one mole of iron chloride, you end up with three moles of chloride ion. So we have a mole ratio. So what we can do is we can say 0 0.750 moles of FeCl3 times three chloride ions for every one FeCl3 gives us uh, 2.25 moles of chloride ion. And then we can say that 2.25 moles divided by 1.00 liters gives you 2.25 molar chloride ions. What we can do in addition to this is we can use mole ratios with concentrations as well as with moles. So if we erase this last part, what we can do is we can say we know that we have 0 0.750 molar FeCl3 and we know that there are three moles of chloride for every one mole of FeCl3 so we know that we end up with 2.25 molar Cl- and the reason we can do this is because the units of molarity are moles per liter and as long as the volume doesn't change we can use the mole ratio with the moles part of that unit. And the moles of FeCl3 are going to cancel and we'll be left with moles per liter of chloride ion. In our final calculation, we have 1.50 liters of 0 0.500 molar hydroxide ions. And we wanna know how many moles of barium hydroxide must have been dissolved to make that solution, to make a solution with that concentration of hydroxide ions. And what we do is very similar to what we did in our last example. We have 1.50 liters and we can use the ratio 
molarity being a ratio of moles per liters. So we have 1.50 liters times 0 0.0500 molar, and we can end up with a number of moles, 0 0.0750 moles of OH minus. And the reason this works again is because molarity is a ratio. It really has units of moles per liter. So we have moles per liter and our liters will cancel and leave us with moles. So we know in our 1.50 liters of 0 0.05 molar hydroxide ions, we have 0 0.075 moles of hydroxide ions. And if those came from the barium hydroxide, we know that there are two hydroxides for every one barium hydroxide. So we can again set up a mole ratio in order to work out how much product we actually needed to dissolve. So we have our data, 0 0.0750 moles of hydroxide ion, and we know that there is one barium hydroxide for every two hydroxide ions. Our hydroxides will cancel, and we'll be left with a number of moles of barium hydroxide. So we end up with 0 0.0375 moles of barium hydroxide.